Uh, the Whips have agreed that the following matter will be debated next. Paragraph 2 of Report Number 3, dealing with the planning application for the Professional Centre in Franciscan Road. Uh, this is Planning Applications Committee Report Number 3 uh, from Councillor Mrs Vanessa Graham. Um, Thank you, Mr Mayor. I'd like to move the reception of Planning Applications Committee Report Number 3. Paragraph 2 is for information. Um, the professionals at the approval of the planning application for Professional Centre Franciscan Road. I believe there is an amendment. Thank you, <laughs> Councillor Mrs. Graham. Yes, there is. Um, I, count, I now call on Councillors Gibson, Gibbons and Randall to move and second their amendment to this paragraph, Understanding Order Number 51E, as set out on page 7 of the supplemental agenda. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor, the, the site um, that is proposed is currently an undeveloped open area at the rear of the former school building known as the Professional Centre. The planning proposal is a significant development being acceptable both in its backland location and particularly in the provision of specialist extra care housing in Tooting, where currently there is none. Over the last five years, this council has responded to the need for a change in residential provision for older, frailer population and the way in which it is delivered. We have acknowledged the need to provide a more flexible, supported housing care, which reflects a movement away from institutional type residential homes. In 2008, we opened our first purpose-built extra care facility in the west of the borough, Chestnut House, Arabella Drive in Roehampton. It provides a much appreciated community environment for people of similar age with a provision of larger self-contained accommodation respecting individual choice and independence. Clients have their own front doors, secure tenancies, and all units, built levels and external levels are designed to be accessible. Extra care homes have on-site care. They can tailor an individual's care requirements and provide emergency support if necessary. Simultaneously, they have facilities and activities on site to promote well-being. These range from hairdressing, chiropody, to leisure activities, outings, gardening, and informative talks. We also have approval for similar provision in the north of the borough. Originally, this plan was to be a three and four story L-shaped building situated on part of the large existing car park to the rear of the professional center with a pitched roof, balconies on every floor and a roof terrace. The developers responded to certain local concerns by reducing the overall height, removing the pitched roof and the roof terrace, both of which produced unnecessary bulk and massing and detracted from the appearance of the professional center. They also took into account the concerns voiced about overlooking balconies and the invasion of privacy relating to Totterdown Street. The balconies at second and third level on the eastern elevation have been removed from the proposal. It was established that although adjacent residential properties were still worried about potential further impact on privacy, the distances between buildings proposed are substantially in excess of 18 meters which is the minimum requirement in a suburban setting. The committee was unhappy with the proposed materials and finishes to the building and asked that a specific condition address this. Committee com members were concerned, and quite rightly so, that the very successful sustainable voluntary organization Work and Play Scrap Store, which operates from the site, would have to relocate. The store is known for the amazing variety of materials that are available for its members to take and use for creative activities in the community, which includes use by our schools. The Economic Development Office was asked to give assistance in finding alternative premises, and I'm very happy to inform the Council that the organisation will be relocating to a Wandsworth owned building between Summerstown and Hazelhurst Road in SW17 
and it will reopen in early March and continue to operate in the borough from this tooting site. Mr. Mayor, I have outlined the reasons why we can't accept the opposition's amendment to reconsider granting planning permission. Considerable changes have been made by the developer in reducing height, making significant separation distances between buildings, and careful assessments of daylight and sunlight. In addition, we impose comprehensive conditions on the permission. All these factors have contributed to our view that this planning proposal is an acceptable backland, backland development, that it has minimal impact on the public realm, and importantly, provides 45 one or two bedded units of much needed affordable housing, housing with 24 hour extra care facilities if required, together with integrated communal facilities for vulnerable and elderly people in this southern part of the borough. I would urge the council to vote against this amendment. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, Councillor Gibbons. For those of you who uh, perhaps don't uh, know this building in Graveney Ward, um, I just want to say a little bit about uh, the planning application and what this building actually is. Um, it says in the planning application, subdivision of an existing car park um, to create a four-storey building with balconies and roof terrace, provide 45 extra care apartments. Um, one of the oddities of the planning system is that we can't actually consider that this isn't really a car park, or at least it isn't going to be a car park for very long, because the building, the professional centre, is going to become a primary school. It's going to be a new um, primary school uh, which is going to be run by Graveney School and which we've supported. That means that actually the car park isn't a car park, it's a school playground. And the fact that this is omitted from the consideration of the planning committee is one of the quirks and oddities of the planning system. And so therefore, what we should be really thinking about is, is it appropriate to have a building of such bulk and size in a backland development behind what is going to be a school which shares an extremely narrow entrance with the actual school itself? Um, the residents themselves had three particular concerns. First of all, there will be a parking problem, not relating to the fact that this was formerly a car park which was used by shoppers um, on Saturday and Sundays, but actually with the people who are going to be working in the school and to some degree people who might visit the people in the extra care homes. So there's going to be, have to be found extra capacity on the streets for the additional parking. I've just had an email um, from one of our residents who's talking about the impact already of the car park being closed before we even have uh, the additional people coming to work on the site. They said uh, the area is totally congested with cars around the corner in Totter Down Street. I checked the parking permits, they all stated business all, whatever that means. What it means is that you can park anywhere if you have one of these business permits and it therefore means that there will be an extremely uh, sudden and excessive burden on local parking. However, one of the real concerns, very real concerns, is the size of this development which overlooks both residential housing and also the playground of the school. And this is acknowledged in the actual paper from the planning department where it says, the activity of the playground will provide interest for the residents of the elderly people's home. So they can sit on their balconies and they can watch the children playing in the playground. They may or may not want to choose to do that. But it seems a rather odd selling point for this scheme to me that you can sit there and you can watch the children play in the playground. Um, now, some residents perhaps unfairly assumed some rather um, scurrilous things about what the residents might be doing. I do not in any way subscribe to that idea. But I certainly think it's slightly odd to have that as a selling point, and it does suggest that that's an extreme case of overlooking because it's actually built into the planning. There is, of course, an element of safety here. The playground will be diminished to half its size. It will be hemmed in between one large building and another large building. Whether a fire, all the uh, occupants of the building would have to decant into that back playground. There is only one exit from that back playground, and it's fairly narrow. And that will be, uh, if the building is on fire, you'd have to go past that. In effect, you are trapped in a closed space between the two buildings with elderly people on one side and your school, if it is unfortunately on fire, on the other. 
Um, so I think there is a, a considerable concern about this. The re residents uh, have objected. There were 289 separate personal objections, a petition of 489 uh, on a petition. Two residents have actually uh, felt so strongly about it they've gone to the planning ombudsman because they feel that the consideration of the fact that, that, that uh, this wasn't really considered as a development on what is a school playground was not really taken into account properly. On a final point, um, and it was perhaps not mentioned in the previous speech, but it should have been, we already have 64 units for elderly people, and those units will go as a result of these being opened up. So we will lose 64 units, but we will gain 45. So in a sense, we're not gaining anything at all. We're actually losing. I do understand, however, that the extra care is slightly different in nature to what is provided currently at Palladino House. But I think when we consider all of these things together in the round, the fact that it's a school rather than a car park, and it's a school playground, the fact we'll actually lose accommodation, I think this planning application doesn't really add up and it doesn't really make sense. Thank you. Councillor Heaster. <coughs> uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm really not quite sure why this reference back is taking place, to be honest with you. Uh, the reason for this apparently is because of the uh, excessive height, bulk, mass to the development and the unnaveness of it and the negative impact on the surrounding area. All those issues were discussed at the planning committee. Councillor Osborne was there, uh, the last speaker was there, the other ward councillor was there. It was quite a long debate. There were a lot of people in the public gallery. We discussed all those issues and many more as well. And on balance we came to the view that we should support the officer recommendation which was that this scheme should go ahead and as the vice chairman of the committee has identified this is a very important strategic plan it's a large site those that don't know it um, unfortunately I can't really explain it all uh, this evening but it is a very large site and it has been an empty site an undeveloped site for a very long time and this application will bring that empty land into good use now, of course, if you live on the sides of that, and you've, over many years, decades, have actually had a nice big open space, obviously you're not going to be very happy. And one can appreciate that, and one can understand why the local ward councillors uh, have had a great deal of uh, correspondence and telephone calls, etc., uh, with those local residents. Quite rightly, they're disturbed. And petitions that came in as well uh, at the actual meeting. But it doesn't alter the planning facts. And the planning facts are fairly straightforward, really, when you narrow it all down. Um, we had a very interesting development here. Detail has been explained quite clearly by the Vice Chairman of the Committee. Very important project indeed. Um, the plan itself is acceptable for quite a number of reasons. Um, it has no impact on the street scene in the Thursdown Road itself because obviously the building is behind the Thursdown uh, building, the, the, the professional centre, the Franciscan, sorry, Franciscan Road is um, on the other side of it. So from a street scene point of view, from a planning point of view, um, it's not got no problem at all. Um, the impact on traffic actually is absolutely negligible. The type of person we're talking about accommodating here isn't going race, racing around in sports cars, etc. And the planning condition actually says that apart from the very limited amount of, of parking on the site being allowed, the residents are not allowed to park in the adjacent streets. So there has been covered. The question of light and sunlight to the gardens, which uh, was a great deal of discussion about at committee, um, because many, many people could see that was going to be reduced by some extent, actually does meet the statutory requirements. So there is no planning reason to refuse it uh, for that particular reason. The issue about privacy. Um, the width of this council chamber is about 20 metres. And none of the buildings we're talking about, no one has got a window that looks out um, 
less than 20 metres, so we're much, much greater uh, distance than that. And I think many of us who live in terraced houses in other parts of the borough will know actually that's quite a, that's quite a, quite a distance away. And therefore, it isn't something that, uh, from a planning point of view, is an issue, and is something that's quite acceptable. So, although uh, the height of this building is higher than the terraced houses in the area, it's no higher than the uh, professional centre itself in Franciscan Road. It's a considerable distance away uh, from the nearest residential houses. And that those, the, the development that is nearest to residential houses um, in um, Totterdown, is it, sorry, I've got the wrong name, Tot Totterdown Street, um, those are three storeys high, where the rest of them are four storeys high. So really, there are many, many benefits that outweigh the disadvantages perceived by the local residents. So, Mr Mayor, very straightforward, I think, on this occasion, the huge advantages, uh, which outweigh quite considerably all those disadvantages that have been mentioned, and I think we should get these new care homes in Tooting. So I, I would reject the amendment. Councillor Randall. Thank you. I, I think one of the reasons why um, this situation has come about where we feel so passionately our objection to this scheme is because of the fact that we are trying to squash a quart into a pint pot. At about the time, uh, the, the um, Viridian has acquired this land at the back of the professional centre as a result of a land swap with the council. So the council has given Viridian the land and would take for itself the land on pa that Palladino and Woodhouse stand on and it gives the council an opportunity to do some development in the town centre um, and puts the uh, older people's housing up off of Franciscan Road. At the time that this land swap was going on, that was, seemed all fine and dandy because I think everybody probably envisaged that the professional centre would be uh, pretty much uh, declared surplus to requirements, disposed of and turned into residential. However, at the same time, along comes our belated baby boom and we have this sudden need for extra school places and to the joy of local residents, it is decided to bring back the professional centre, the former ancient school, into use as a school and, I dare say to residents' minds, the playground, that car park, would become a playground once again. However, what we are doing is we're putting a school and an extra care centre into that space where really there is only room for a school. And keeping that space as a school space with a nice big playground gives that school opportunity to expand should the, the need come along for three or four form entry school. So we are losing flexibility and we are putting too much into one place. Um, and what is being put in that space is, quite frankly, a carbuncle. It is an enormous building standing in a backland site which needs far more sensitivity in its development. We've heard from um, Councillor Gibbons about how there are issues about the access to the back of the site and the fears of how the, the um, site relates to the school. And that was one of the real shortcomings in the whole of the report that came to Planning Applications Committee, that the, the application and its implications was not considered in conjunction with the use of the school, build, uh, of the um, professional centre as a school building, and all the consequent loss of parking spaces that were going alongside that. So what we have is we have from now a sort of um, office space to school space and extra care home plus still some office space in that building and no car parking space and that's going to put an awful lot of pressure on the parking and on the traffic uh, situation in Franciscan Road and that is a road that is already under a lot of stress. I think as well I mean I don't really understand why, given that the need for the school places arose, there wasn't a reversal of the land swap, if you like, and a way looked at to see how the extra care accommodation could be um, provided 
on the Wood House and Palladino House sites. After all, very um, admirable as the provision of extra care housing is, that is not the only place where that could be provided. And we could be more flexible and look at that. So on those grounds, I think that um, it is really important that we ask the, the planning application committee to reconsider this. I understand that the points I'm making are not entirely planning. However, this is a political arena. Intervention, Mr. Mayor? Are you prepared to take an intervention, Councillor Rama? You are. Go ahead, please. Um, just to say, I was hoping to hear more about the bulk height and massing and how this was affecting. What I'm actually hearing a lot about is um, how the opposition party would like to have a school with a very large playground. And that wasn't something we were asked to, to, to look at at planning, and therefore it cannot be a reason for overturning a planning application. I, I would like to hear how the bulk height and massing, which is in your amendment is going to affect this uh, application. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. I think you'll find that the second part of our amendment do, uh, mentions the impact on the surrounding area, and that is what I'm concentrating on now. Um, the the uh, knock-on effects of the loss of the, the play, of the car park as it is now to become both an extra care home and also a, um, a school playground. So. I, I consider that I am speaking to our amendment, but I thank the councillor for her points. Um, and in summing up, I think that uh, we, have to, we have to take into consideration the, the real degree of distress, distress as councillor Heaster was talking about, um, from local residents to the mass of this um, development that's going on. A distress that may not be dissimilar to those uh, that um, suffered by people around the Springfield Hospital site, maybe, which had a bit more sympathetic ear from the councillor. Um, and um, on that respect, I shall remain in support of our local residents and continue to oppose this development. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, uh, I should have cleared an interest, I think. I, I hadn't realised this. Brodian had anything to do with the new um, care facilities. And my wife uh, works for Viridian, so I have got an interest. <laughs> so, um, could I get some advice? I mean, obviously I won't vote, but um, uh, do I have to leave the room? or? Yes, you, you, you've declared your interest, and that's fine. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. What I was going to say is that my notes say that uh, Mrs. Graham, Mrs. Vanessa Graham, has the right of reply if she requires. Mr. Mayor, thank you. However, I would like to say that I think that we are, con I'd like to reiterate that we are here considering the planning issues around this application and approved uh, proposal. And I think the amendment has dwelled dwelled too much on other factors which aren't direct planning issues. And I think on balance, as Councillor Heaster has said and uh, Councillor Sutters, that this is actually a very well needed development in this particular part of the borough and for the first time Tooting will have proper extra care provision which it needs. And I've taken Councillor Randall's point about the uh, other site, but the other site does not have, at the moment, the sort of provision that is being put forward in this planning application. So, Mr. Mayor, I would like to move that we um, vote on the amendment and go back to the substantive motion. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, then, the, the matter now before the Council is that the amendment proposed by Councillor Gibbons and...
I formally move the reception of report, Executive Report Number 2, and Paragraph 1 is for information. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Paragraphs 2 and 3 are for information. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Paragraph 4 is for information. Paragraph 5 is for information. Paragraph 6 and 7 are for information. Thank you. Take paragraph 8 is for information. Thank you. Paragraph. Uh, Mr. Mayor, paragraph 9 is for information. Amendment is moved, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Seconded. Uh, Mr. Mayor, paragraph 10 is for information. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, planning applications, I'd like to uh, move, sorry. Planning applications committee report number three, paragraph one is for information. I'd like to move the reception of planning applications committee report number four paragraph one is for information Three. and paragraph two is for information Three. 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 Thank, you. thank you thank you mr mayor picture move reception of the audit committee paragraph one is for information Three. paragraph two for information Three. paragraph three for information Three. paragraph four for information Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Back to move reception of the Pensions Committee report. Paragraphs 1 and 2 are for information. Thank you. 